official good afternoon, everyone. I was uh, advised to keep it brief as we want to miss the rain uh, before. It, they got an amen over there? The, the, pre the preacher's over there. The bootleg preacher's over here and back, and back, and back, and back there. Shade tree preacher back there. So um, uh, I'm a, I'm a, uh, what a wonderful um, exercise this has been in, in, um, in, in, in democracy in, in, in telling the story of the African seed and the American sun in a way that's edifying and brings people together. Uh, this has been uh, the work of, of, of so many. I know uh, Mr. Simons is going to make sure we do all the proper um, uh, recognitions of the folks who, who pull this together. Many of them uh, you see up here uh, behind me uh, today. I do want to thank um, Henry uh, for his, his leadership. Um, uh, and, and I know the city manager feels the very same uh, way, uh, the importance that he's played. And I think Henry's had, had some connection to almost every mural we've done, by the way, some personal connection. I think it says a lot about him and, and his family and what they mean to, to this uh, city. Um, I want to give my thanks to uh, the members of, of city council. Um, obviously, we're in, we're in District 1, so Mr. Davis gets the first nod. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Devine, um, uh, Councilwoman Min McDowell, and, and, and uh, the others who I think are, are not here. but. But this is the manifestation of a unanimous action of city council. Uh, and I think that's so important uh, to note that we, we have uh, positive tensions. We, 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 we disagree sometimes. We always disagree ag agreeably. But on, on this, on taking the time to recognize the service of men and women who help make this city what it is and, 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 and indeed push this city to become what it could be uh, was so Im Im important. Um, my personal uh, feelings about, obviously, about, about um, uh, uh, Benjamin Mack, uh, Mother Sentima Clark, and, and it, 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 it's, it's always great when we, when we have chances to, to, to see these murals and, and to think back on history. And I, I love this mural in particular because uh, of the role that Liz Belt Middleton played in, 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 in my development as a young man, as a, as, a, as a young man trying to understand his, his place and space in the, in the, in the world. Uh, he's a contemporary. Uh, he, was, he was a leader, an educator. Uh, he was a strong man uh, who, who, who made sure that we all understood uh, the, the internal power that uh, we all had following men like Listervelt Militant and Asa Hilliard and, and, and Earl Shinhost and others. It, it helped me develop my sense of place and um, uh, being able to become close to his family and, and, and serve as a, as a, as a, as a brother uh, to his son Bakari and others, it's, it's just been special. And, and this one is, is, is especially special to me. And I want to thank um, everyone for making uh, this happen. I'm going to take my seat and, and, and come back up when we are going to cut the ribbon. I'm going to yield the microphone uh, to my friend, uh, the man who's led this, uh, this, this district uh, proudly uh, without uh, regard for form or function, boldly aggressively, always advocating for District 1 for the last 20 years, my friend Sam Davis. This is a special occasion, and uh, I had the opportunity to kind of go back and uh, do some reading and um, to try and get a feel of whether or not my perceptions um, of, of the people that we give thanks to and, and honor uh, were correct. And um, just want you to know that um, I also have a kinship feeling with um, Listervelt. Uh, I um, re found out that he spent his summers, he grew up in St. Stephen's and I spent my summers in St. Stephen's. And for all of you who do not know where St. Stephen's, South Carolina is, it's way down there near Booger's Woods, as we call it, uh, in Berkeley County. But uh, I had some very good experiences there, experience in the rural parts of South Carolina uh, and um, got to pick cotton, not, I'm sorry, uh, pick watermelons and um, plant sweet potatoes and that sort of thing. But the, the, the main thing that caused me to focus on Roosevelt was that, um, Listervelt, was that um, he had a saying that, um, you know, we should all look out for what's um, for what information is going into children's minds and heads. We have a responsibility uh, to be 
mindful of that because there's a battle going on for the minds of our young people. That was then. That argument is today. And so that's part of the, that's one of the benefits of, of neighborhood, not neighborhood redevelopment, but the kinds of activities and the kinds of things that we support and that you support in these neighborhoods in the city of Columbia. Uh, and that is taking care of one another, making sure that people don't trash our neighborhoods and those kinds of things. Uh, and so they were, were ahead of their time. I had the uh, opportunity of just passing uh, the grand lady on the College of Charleston campus one day. Uh, very humble, as her biography says, but so magnificent in her impact on the lives of so many people not just South Carolina, not just Charleston, not Georgia, but all over this country. Again, dealing with the minds and the education and the direction of people who become leaders in their own right over a period of time. And the right reverend impact around the country, but most importantly, again, in this area, in this community, the Ridgewood Baptist Church, children's programs, daycare, again, impacting the minds of young people who become future leaders. That, I think, is the best gift, the best outcome of all we've done in this venture, and hope that you, like I, give thanks and appreciation for the people that we're celebrating today. They proved their point, they paved the way, they planted the seeds, and it's up to you and you and you to mix that all together into a nice southern brew called commitment, friendship, dedication, and gratitude. Thank you. Of course, my name is Henry Simons, and I'm the Assistant City Manager for Operations for the City of Columbia. And as I have done at all three dedications, um, I want to thank our mayor, uh, Steve Benjamin, uh, for his vision to see this work become a true reality uh, throughout, throughout the entire city. It's amazing, uh, amazing work amazing experience, so thank him so much for his continued leadership. We are grateful to our entire council for endorsing and supporting this public art initiative. Many thanks to Ms. Teresa Wilson, who's also here with us today, sitting behind me, for her leadership, her support, her guidance on this, on this project. Thank you so much to our city manager. Today, is the fourth and final public art dedication. Even though the formal dedications end after today, these stories will be told to many in the immediate future and for years to come. Every time one of our citizens decide to spend time here at Hyatt Park, especially this generation, there will be an opportunity to educate. There will be an opportunity to honor and to recognize ed educators and civil rights leaders who are eloquently displayed behind me. Benjamin Mack, September Clark, and Listerville Middleton. Today, we recognize the pursuit of citizenship. Today, we tell their stories. Today, we recognize them as strong African-American leaders that were connected historically to their communities, how they influenced culture, and impact society in such a profound way. We celebrate their passion, we celebrate their courage, their commitment, and their resilience during the Civil Rights Movement. This process could not be possible without the work and the partnership through the Parks and Recreation Foundation. 
We also partnered with Dr. Bobby Donaldson, who is the director of the Civil Center for Civil Rights History and Research for the University of South Carolina, and has worked as a professor there for over 20 years. He will bring uh, some rem remarks here in just a moment. He is also uh, the lead scholar for Columbia SE 63, Our Story Matters, which is a history initiative that chronicles the struggle for civil rights and social justice here in Columbia. We have also partnered with Lee Snellgrove, the executive director of One Columbia for Arts and Culture, and Lee is also a member of the Parks and Rec Foundation Board in which he is helping us or has helped us with this project in that capacity. Uh, we are very proud of this work uh, that has been accomplished and more proud of the why in deciding to do this across our city. I want to acknowledge uh, our Parks and Recreation Foundation Board Chair, Mr. Fred Monk, who is with us today. Thank you so much for being here, Fred. Also want to recognize Ms. Jerry Selman, who is also a Parks and Rec Foundation Board member for her presence on today as well. I want to acknowledge our Parks and Recreation Leadership Team. They are gathered throughout this park, our Hyatt Park Leadership Team. All of those who help facilitate this work, uh, we are forever grateful for your commitment and dedication. I want to say to you, if you are connected to the Middleton, Clark, or Mack family in any way, whether you experience uh, going to church with them, you are a relative, um, please stand and be acknowledged uh, by the community at this time. If you're connected in any way, thank you so much. We honor you today through your families. We appreciate your, your presence today. We did have an opportunity to meet Miss Middleton, Lister Middleton's wife on yesterday. She could not be here today, but we're grateful for our interaction with her on yesterday. Uh, she took time to come out here. We took some pictures. She did an interview for us, and she is very thankful for the recognition of her husband. So we're grateful for that interaction. Special thanks to Charmaine Minifield, our featured artist, for capturing the very essence of what we asked for. Thank you so much for, for your work on this project. Again, thank you for your presence today. Now this time, the true historian himself will come and bring some remarks. Please help me welcome Dr. Bobby Donaldson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Henry. G good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the reconstructed Hyatt Park, Councilman Davis. It, it is work in progress as we gather uh, here today. Uh, I want to thank Henry Lee Snellgrove, the City Council, Mayor Benjamin, and the Parks and Recreation Foundation uh, for this extraordinary initiative. Columbia SC 63 was established in 2013. Uh, at that time, we assumed that this project would be one year in the making and we would conclude. But today is a reminder of why this work is so incredibly needed. I would like to preface my remarks by taking you to a moment. Uh, in 1937, it was a meeting of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History established by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. The president of that organization was a woman from the small community of Maysville, South Carolina. Her name was Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Dr. Bethune said the following words during the midst of the Great Depression. If our people are to fight their way out of bondage, we must arm them with the sword and the shield, belief in themselves and their possibilities, based upon a sure knowledge of the achievements of the past. We must tell our story from the cradle to the grave, from kindergarten to college. We must do so at whatever cost, even if it breaks the very back of the kingdom. This public art initiative joins in the tradition of Carter G. Woodson and Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune in telling the story to new generations. Today we gather in this space to tell the story of a woman who was regarded as the mother of the civil rights movement, Septima Poinsett Clark, born in Charleston in 1898. Between 1929 and 1947, many do not know that Ms. Clark spent those years in Columbia, South Carolina, where she taught at the famed Booker T. Washington High School, the Celia Dow Saxon Elementary School, and the old Howard School. And there are men and women today in their 80s and 90s who remember her vividly as a teacher. Ms. Clark, when she was fired from her job 
for being a member of the NACP, continued to teach. She established a program called the Citizenship Schools through the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. One of her students at the Highlander Folk School in the early 1950s was a woman named Rosa Parks. Ms. Clark was also a very proud graduate of Benedict College. And in 1975, she delivers the commencement address at Benedict. And the title of her address was, quote, Beyond Chaos, a new history for a new generation. Among the individuals who came under the influence of Mrs. September Clark was a gentleman who was a strong anchor here in this community. His name was Benjamin J. Mack, who also was a graduate of the Booker T. Washington High School. Deacon Mack, or Professor Mack, was a prominent member of the Ridgewood Church. At one point, he lived on Dixie Avenue. At another point, he lived on Monticello Road. And then his final home, on Ridgeway Street, just doors away from his church. Through the work of Ms. Glennis Pearson and the Richland County Conservation Commission, a few years ago, we were able to install a historical marker at the doorsteps of Deacon Mack's home. Deacon Mack was also very active in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He was very active in voter registration and voter participation and outreach. He helped to organize the 1963 March on Washington. He helped to organize the Poor People's Campaign of 1968. But he was also extremely passionate about the need to teach history. Deacon Mack saw no separation between citizenship and history. These are his words that he wrote in the late 1960s. He said, I am disgusted with the history in our public schools. He said, we need to do something about it. If we organize the political power, we can start dealing with the school boards. We can control our own education. We can learn Negro history in the schools. We can teach the great spirit of the civil rights movement and create a desire to learn more about ourselves and prepare our children for a good life. So those children who come to Hyatt Park will look on a wall and they will know the story of Septima Clark and they will know the story of the man on the far end, Benjamin Mack. But they'll also know the story of another passionate champion of history, born in Berkeley County, South Carolina in 1952. Most people never imagined that young boy who grew up on the farm would become a phenomenal journalist known around the country. In 1977, Listervelt Middleton began the popular program for the people, which exposed viewers to the history of African-American life and culture and the history of Africa itself. He published a number of books, including one famously named Fatback and Caviar. Mr. Middleton's life came to an end far too soon. He died at the age of 45 years old in 1996. But prior to moving to Blythewood, Mr. Middleton lived only a few blocks from where we are today, on Lark Avenue near the Hyatt Park Elementary School. And there in that home, which is still standing, he taught regularly African and African-American history. As Mr. Simons mentioned, on yesterday we gathered here with Mrs. Ernestine Middleton to reflect on this mural. And while we were here, some members of the parks and recreation staff, they were watching and looking at the mural. And they kept saying, who is that? Who is that? Is, could this be so-and-so? Well, soon we will have a marker here to tell you exactly who these people are. But as I listened to them, I thought about, and, and Mayor Benjamin just called me a shade tree preacher, so let me go down that road right now. I, I thought about a passage from the book of Revelation. There's a moment there where John the Revelator is sent off to the Isle of Patmos, and he sees visions of people of every tribe, nation, and language. And here comes the rain. And John looks and says, who are these people? Who are these people? And the elder says, you know. You know precisely who they are. And John said, these are they who've come out of great tribulation. These are they who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Today we come to honor and to celebrate those who endured great tribulation and left a lasting imprint in the city of Columbia. Thank you very much. Since we are getting the rain, I'll be very quick, um, which was my intent anyway, because it's always hard to follow Dr. Donaldson. Um, 
So uh, before we started this project, I, I knew very little about Midgem and Mac or Lister Bill Middleton, and only some about uh, Mississippi Clark. Um, but thanks to this project and this mural, I've obviously learned those stories. And um, that's what public art does, is it allows us to tell the stories we want to tell about ourselves and who we are as Colombians and why what these stories are important. And, and we, we focus on these people. Um, so it can teach us and it can honor people for doing good work and it can be beautiful and it can enhance the built environment of our city. Uh, public art in our neighborhoods can tell important stories about who we are, what we care about, and what we want others to know about us. Um, and public art um, displays how people come together. Um, we all came together as a team to accomplish this and create this project. Uh, so I want to thank the mayor, um, council, the city administrator. Um, certainly thanks to Dr. Donaldson and Mr. Simons. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, the Hyatt Park community um, for their involvement in this and um, other North Columbia communities that all work together. Uh, thank you to Todd Martin and uh, Ebony Kelly, staff members that really helped me um, coordinate all these projects together. And uh, certainly thanks to individual park staff members for the resources and time they dedicated to making this installation go smoothly, particularly Mr. Todd Jackson, who operated the lift for the artists um, and spent many hours out here with them working. Um, so uh, I'll say special thanks to Charmaine Minifield, uh, Sienna Minifield, and Ariel Flowers of the New F Freedom Project for their work on this mural. And I'll introduce them so they can come up and say a few words before we have to scatter. Okay, I am only going to say how awesome it is to return back to Hyatt Park to do another wall with you all, um, and this time with my next generation. Um, I only came and put the details on. They had put all of this <laughs> paint and all of this color on before I came, and this was my chance to pass the baton to them in their career, just like these educators did for the next generation. This, I want to at least also introduce my organization, the New Freedom Project. Um, the theme of this wall and this project and, and in terms of a public art initiative for a community is right in keeping with the mission of our organization. Uh, the New Freedom Project preserves black narratives in changing communities. So what we do is we, we erect monuments like these or create programming, cultural programming, um, that allows us to celebrate the history of African American people in this country. So, we have walls, a lot of our walls are in Atlanta, but we also have a wall in Brooklyn where we were featured in the census uh, commercial of 2020. And our other wall here in Hyatt Park is um, next to the community garden as you approach. Um, so that's the new Freedom Project. Um, also about the design, the, the fabric that you're seeing is Ankara African fabric, uh, West African fabric. Um, and that's an ode to African, our African origins as, um, in terms of black history, but also it's, a, it's, it's uh, inspired by a freedom quilt. Um, and I know some of my elders know about freedom quilts. They, the, the, the design itself with the diagonal lines is a gesture of the bow tie uh, design in freedom quilts, which was an indication of you should dress nicely or you should, you should um, prepare for the journey in a certain way. And so I, I feel like in order to um, reference the, the history of education and passing the baton of, of leadership in, in terms of civil rights and, and, um, and civic duty uh, that we want to pass to the young people, we, we are messaging to them to prepare for the journey. So that's what this is. It actually is a, a painting of a freedom quilt um, in, and the portraits were actually done by one of our artists, Ashley Dobson who is an, an, an Atlanta artist was a, who wasn't able to be with us today. And a little bit more about uh, our presence here in Columbia. Um, we've been hosted by the arts community here. And in true fashion of how the artists function in community, we, um, we work together. We work right on the ground together. Where, where are we gonna stay? We stayed with artists. Where are we going to eat? We ate with artists. <laughs> we, were, we were supported by the, the, the vibrant arts community that is uh, Columbia. And that was the same with the Hyatt Park mural before. We were part of Indy Grits Festival. Um, but this time we were hosted by uh, Ronnie Nicole Henderson, who is an amazing, um, renowned filmmaker. I'm not sure if you know of Ronnie Nicole. Uh, she's a Columbia artist. And my, um, my project manager for this project is also Ariel Flowers, uh, her daughter. So raise your hand, raise your hand. 
Yes, yes, yes. And again, my, my next generation, Sienna, really put the paint on this wall. This is really their wall. So I want you to both to stand up and just, if y'all can just give them some love. <laughs> I, I have been in Africa for a year. I was quarantined. I was there visiting and my flight was due back March 16th and my flight was canceled. And uh, I was there for a year as a result. And when I got off the plane, I came straight to Columbia. And I painted that wall with my, with my baby, <laughs> who I had been missing all that time. So this wall means a lot to all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your, for your remarks. Um, we're going to have our mayor come and give us our closing remarks. And, but before he does, I do want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Ty Ziegler, the Neighborhood Association president. I think he was with us earlier. I, there is Ty, thank you so much for you all, your all's presence on today and your support uh, as well. I do apologize for I couldn't control the weather, uh, so I'm sorry that some of you all got your hair wet. I apologize for that, but thankfully we were all set up on the inside. So without further ado, I want to turn it over back over to Mayor Benjamin. My hair is destroyed, <laughs> my one good suit, uh, but all worth it. Um, just as I know, uh, Deacon Mack, uh, Mother Seth McClark, and uh, Lissabelle Middleton uh, work to teach young people every single day is that God gives us all very special gifts uh, in science and the arts and religion and uh, leadership, whatever it happens to be. Uh, once we find that gift, it's, it's, it's our duty to use that gift to benefit all of us. And I just wanna, really want to thank Charmaine, Minnie and Phil, and, and your wonderful team. Uh, of, of leaders who are sharing your gift with the people of, of, of Columbia. It will, it will pay dividends for generations yet to come.